We operate from a very selfish perspective when we communicate, which can be or come off as a bit self-absorbed. But not that we're just talking about self, it's just that our view is from such a personal perspective. You understand what I'm saying? And it's okay as long as it isn't conclusive. Meaning that you have to be able to communicate with naturally from your personal position, but being able to simultaneously get outside of yourself and try to see it from the other person's point of view. And the only way you can do that is by asking questions. I just really want to talk to you real quick about communication. Because this is one thing that I noticed that uh, is really hindering us in regards to how we connect with people, how we jail, how we vibe with each other, right? Is this lack of communication and the lack and the lack of value that we have for communication. But one of the main things I want to point out, which I've spoke about before, but I want to kind of speak about it again real briefly, is about terminology. A lot of the terminologies we use, right, uh, a lot of the ideas, the concepts that are connected to these terminologies are very relative. And that's the operative term I really wanted to point out is the relative idea. When you think about most things that you say, most of your ideas, most of your opinions, uh, most of your feelings about something, uh, when you speak it in regards to characterizing something using whatever adjective you choose to use, a lot of times it is very relative. What do I mean? Just in case you might not know and you don't feel like going looking it up, I mean relative in the sense that it is compared to something. So like if I say somebody's fast, fast compared to what I consider to be slow. If I say someone is big, that's uh, big considering to what I consider, to, big considering to what I consider to be small or uh, dumb versus what I consider to be smart, unless you're using it in its literal definition term, which a lot of people don't use their words like that. They speak very general. They don't use their words very literal. Um, which is another point that when most people speak, they speak very general. But when you're talking about or talking to someone that is, I would say, has a high regard for vocabulary, have a high regard for communication, have a high regard for not just communication on a general level, but communication on an academic level, like those who might teach grammar, those who teach uh, literature, you know what I'm saying? So when you're talking to somebody like that and you're using words, they typically are hearing you literally. Every terminology you use, it, they're taking it in literally. But when you're saying it, you in your mind, you're saying, well, I only mean it in a general sense. Well, you know what I meant. Well, you know what I meant. When you talk like that, oh, that person can say, well, not really. I knew what you said. But now I understand what you meant. But it's, it's still up for you to understand the error in how you communicate it and make corrections to that. So you have the grammar, you have the terminology, um, and then you just have your personal perspective. You know, understanding that a lot of times when you see things the way you see it, that's just the way you see it. And again, that's what makes things so relative. And so we have to just be mindful when we're having these conversations with people and we're saying, using all these different adjectives, describing people, describing things, describing whatever, in the way that we do so loosely, how easy it is to be misunderstood. And when you're really trying to have a connection with someone, then you're talking to be not just understood, but when you ask questions, you ask them questions to also understand. And so if you have a conversation with somebody to understand it, and to be understood, then that's how you really can, that's how you develop and create a real true bond, a real true connection, a real true vibe. The selfish part. Most people, I mean, I need, you have to understand when you're talking to people, but you also have to understand when, you have to understand when you talk to people about the person that you're talking to, as well as yourself when you haven't to talked to person, people, personal people, is that most people still communicate from a very personal, perspective a very selfish perspective that's the problem that's that's the more accurate term selfish perspective and what do i mean when i say selfish perspective with the understanding that everybody operates from a selfish perspective because of the fact that that is the way we are set up biologically self-preservation but that's another story anyway we operate from a very selfish perspective when we communicate which can be or come off as a bit self-absorbed but not that we're just talking about self, it's just that our view is from such a personal perspective. You understand what I'm saying? And it's okay as long as it isn't conclusive. Meaning that you have to be able to communicate with naturally from your personal position, but being able to simultaneously get outside of yourself and try to see it from the other person's point of view. And the only way you can do that is by asking questions. What do you mean? Why did you say that? Help me understand when you say so and so and so and so and this, that, and other. You have to ask those kind of questions. 
And when you do that, and as you do that, you will begin to get deeper into the conversation with another individual, and there will be a stronger connection and bond. Who doesn't like to meet somebody that says, oh, you feel, understands you? Who doesn't like to meet somebody that understands me? I mean, like, you, you, you get it. You get it. You get it, man. You really understand what I'm trying to say. You really understand what I've been trying to communicate. A lot of people miss, how, how often do you hear people say, I'm, I'm misunderstood? A lot of people misunderstand me. We all want to be understood. But we have to also, in our desire to be understood, not only strive to properly communicate with the words we choose, with our volume, with our body language, our face expression, all of that can give can, can give off a miscommunication. All of that. I see women frown up when they you ask a woman the question, she frown up and roll her eyes. I asked some guy in the barbershop the other day. I mean, why she why she, you see how she rolled her eyes at the end of her at, in the end of her question? If had I asked her why she do that, she wouldn't even realize she done it. But anyway, that's another conversation. But my point is, you have to be mindful of your body language, your tone, your volume. I mean, all of that is in part of communicating. You have to be in being a proper, masterful, um, sufficient, adequate, just a good communicator. You have to be mindful of all those things. Um, and again, while doing so, being how much we talk, how long you talk, when not to talk. There's another rule, say, which I'm even working on. Is about even when you're correcting someone, it's not good to cut them off. Let them finish, then correct them. But I have this thing about cutting people off because it's like I don't want you to talk five minutes based off of mis off a of misunderstanding. So when I hear that you have a misunderstanding, I want to cut you off. But again, that's another conversation. But it say don't cut people off. That's that's another rule with the art of communication. That's a, that you can actually look that link up. It's on YouTube. The art of communication. That's a a, a good listen. It's a it's a book, but it's a good audio book as well. So, so um, uh, your terminology. Um, your selfish perspective, your your understanding the, the relativity of your words, um, pull back on being so opinionative. You know, first don't ask you, don't just feel free to ask. I mean, just throw it out there. I mean, we talk about vibing. You you'll one day get it, understand how important it is to have good relations. How important it is to leave a good spirit with people, because typically people might not remember what you said all the time, but they remember how you had them feeling. They remember the way you made them feel. And that's what makes people not want to talk to you. That's what makes people not want to deal with you. That's what makes people not want to whatever with you. I know when you're in your mind, you might say, well, F them. That's good. The, 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 the last to marry you. That's, that's the defensive mechanism you've created. But again, that's another conversation to get you to understand how significant it really is. But anyway, I hope I was able to um, convey and, and get out to you a real proper and true and sound understanding. And if you have any questions, please get into the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, you can also email me at info at enlighteningmindsent.com or you can, of course, DM me and whatever, get into the comments and I will try to answer any questions that you put forward. Peace and blessings.